Well, let's get some more analysis on this now. I'm joined in the studio by Simon Waldman, who's the Middle East and Mediterranean Studies lecturer at King's College University in London. Uh, Simon, thanks for coming on. Uh, Erdogan and the AKP then have had a majority for 13 years, haven't they? Um, how much of a change will this be for Turkey? Well, at the moment, quite frankly, we don't know. It depends how the coalition negotiations take place. Um, the it could be possible that there will not be actually a government in place and that in about 45 days or so, there could be another round of elections. And if there is a coalition, it will be very delicate. Uh, in, in, in the past in Turkey, coalitions don't really last the full term and, again, early elections. So it actually sounds like a simple question, but it's actually quite complicated what happens. I see. And uh, in terms of what does happen, uh, could we see a coalition formed easily or would they rule as a minority party uh, or would we see fresh elections soon? I mean, what, what's on the table here? These are exactly the things that are being thrashed out right now. The president, so Tayyip Erdogan himself, even though he has loyalties to the AKP, he's technically not supposed to be affiliated to any party. He asks the party which has the best chance, the, the head of the party that has the best chance of forming a coalition, to do so. And that's exactly what the AKP want to do. They've said that's, that's what they're going to try and do. And their best chance is to form a coalition with the MHP, the Nationalist Party in Turkey. Some call them ultra-nationalists. And see if they can have any kind of way of actually ruling together, even though there are significant differences between the two. But that's the best chance. Uh, Erdogan was hoping for a two-thirds majority to, to essentially uh, cement more power within the country and, and push through his idea of what the country should be like. And a lot of people were opposed to that. And they've shown that in these polls and these votes, haven't they? So why do you think that we've seen the rise of other parties in Turkey when the, the, the ruling party have had such a long majority for so long? Well, there's a couple of things here that you, that you raise which I think are important. This wasn't itself a referendum of type Erdogan. Mm -hmm. There were presidential elections last year, which he won by 50%. So it's not about necessarily Erdogan himself, but it is about his style and his vision of Turkey in the future and changing the constitution. Many even AKP supporters, were quite sceptical about what kind of system he wanted to put in place. There wasn't enough really uh, discussed about it uh, in terms of the actual detail. It just seemed to be it would be Erdogan in charge. And they were a little bit sceptical about that. There were also other things as well, such as the economy, uh, the Turkish economy slowing down. There's also governing fatigue as well. There's also increasing attempts by the ruling government to get involved in people's lives, which they didn't quite like. Then, as you said, there's the opposition parties as well, mm -hmm. the Hedeper, which is the, the, the Kurdish-oriented party, not just Kurdish, but Kurdish-oriented party, which collected the Kurdish vote, plus reached out to leftists and also liberals, mm. um, uh, minorities, uh, women. And there was, a, there was an opening. A significant percentage of Turkish voters were uh, swayed by the HDP because mm. there was essentially a market for it in business. Speech. And there's been conflict with uh, the Kurds in the past, of course. Um, how much influence do you think that the HDP party will have in a new government? Um, at the moment, this has been ruled out. Dermot Tash, who's the leader of the HDP, said before the elections that he would not join a coalition with the AKP. And shockingly, as a politician, he, st he stuck to his word. <laughs> and he said after the elections that he's ruling that out. So he's not going to have too much influence. However, this is a factor that the AKP have to consider. Here is a party which eight, with 80 seats in parliament, in the Turkish parliament, which is something significant. And it's also significant because the HDP representing many Kurds are also the, the party, the individuals, the politicians that would have to be negotiated when it comes to any kind of peace settlement over the Kurdish question in Turkey. We saw a, a voter turnout of 86% in these elections. Um, why do you think that the Turks were so engaged by this process? Well, first of all, voter, tur voter turnout in Turkey is higher than that of, of Britain, just usually, yeah. um, and other Western countries mm -hmm. as well. But in this election, this was... You know, go to coffee shops, go to go to restaurants in Turkey. This is what everyone is talking about, not just virtually on on Twitter and Facebook, but also in real life, because so much was riding on this. Um, had, um, a, as you said before, two thirds majority been given to the AKP or been been voted for by the AKP, the whole system would have changed. And of course, there's other things as well, such as the Gezi Park incidents two years ago, and this is the first general election since the Gezi Park protests before mm -hmm. there were local elections, presidential elections, but a general election is what really counts. 
What do you think that these elections will mean for Turkey's foreign policy? One, when it comes to accepting migrants from the Syrian border, mm -hmm. and also um, the, the fight against Islamic State, again, which is right on the doorstep. At the moment, we just don't know. We just don't know. One thing that I will say for certainty is that any kind of idea that there will be a Turkish intervention in, in Syria, you can rule that out. I, I don't even think you can rule that out for 45 days. I think you can rule it out for a much longer term. If there's going to be a coalition government, there's no way they would agree to something so substantial. In the smaller bits and pieces, I don't think you'll see that much uh, of a difference in terms of relations with the European Union, uh, uh, America, NATO allies. It would more or less stay the same as it is now. When it comes to the rest of the Middle East, um, it is a big question mark, of course. And this is exactly what would be part of the debate between the potential coalition parties about Turkey's foreign policy orientation, which has been a subject of, of significant concern. Simon Waldman, thank you very much indeed for that from King's College, London.